The 1977 Enfield Poltergeist case which inspired the movie. But what really happened in the Enfield England house? If you just come across the channel then chances are you won't see it again so hit that subscribe button we cover cases every day. Just a disclaimer that this case is just a disclaimer that this case is Peggy Hodgson, a single mother of four, moved into the council house in 1977 after going through a divorce. It was a time of political uproar and many families were in poverty. But little did the Hodgson family know that the house that they would call home would be infested with evil. When Janet 11 and Margaret 12 yelled and called for help, their mother Peggy rushed into the room and in a frenzy they tried to explain to her that the chest in their room had started to move on its own. But Peggy just didn't want to hear it. She had enough on her plate, she had enough things to worry about and she just didn't need ghost stories right now. However, at that moment the chest slammed against the door locking Peggy out of the girl's room and forcing her to run to her neighbours for help. She was now convinced and terrified. Her neighbours would say later in an interview that they did hear knocking noises coming from the Hodgson house. Peggy immediately called the police and a constable would arrive at the scene. He later reported that a large armchair moved unassisted four foot across the floor. The police officer quickly wrote down his notes and he exited the property. Things would only get worse over the next 18 months in the Hodgson house. Furniture would be thrown everywhere and tossed upside down, toys were being thrown, banging noises everywhere, writing on the walls appeared and even the children started to levitate. Cups would inexplicably fill with water, things would randomly burst into flames and a disembodied voice would speak to them. According to Janet, the most frightening encounter was when a curtain wrapped itself around her neck next to her bed. Peggy eventually turned to the press for help. She reached out to the Daily Mirror and they would send Graham Morris, uh, who was a photographer, to the house to capture the hauntings. And this is when all hell broke loose. Morris would take some disturbing photos and amongst them is a photo of Janet being tossed across her bedroom by the poltergeist while her sister Margaret would watch in horror. Morris would report things started to fly around everywhere, people were screaming and it was chaos and this would prompt the Daily Mirror and the Hodgson's to seek the help of paranormal investigators Maurice Gross, Anita Gregory along with Guy Leon Playfair. Gross would report when he first got there nothing really happened for a while then he experienced Lego pieces and marbles flying across the room. What shocked him the most was when he picked one of them up, it was red hot. He also reported that on the first day when he arrived at the house, he was standing in the kitchen and the t-shirt leapt off the table and flew from one side of the room to the other side. Then the poltergeist decided to speak. It was talking through Janet and they noticed that her lips hardly seemed to be moving. He would tell the investigators that his name was Bill Wilkins and he died of a hemorrhage in the living room. Investigators later confirmed with Wilkins' son that a man by that name had indeed died in that house many years ago. Ed and Lorraine Warren, the famous demonologist, would be called to visit that property. And based on their investigation, they were convinced that supernatural forces were at work at that house. However, there were many that were skeptical and had their doubts. A magician named Milbourne Christopher went to that house to investigate and would later say that the activity was the work of a little girl who just wanted to cause a bit of trouble and who was very very clever. Ryan Allen, a ventriloquist, said that Janet was playing tricks with Bill's voice because she enjoyed the attention. Although Maurice Gross believed the activities at the property were real, Guy Playfair however was unconvinced. Guy observed in his case notes that Wilkins generally refused to speak unless the girls were alone in a room and the door was closed and that the Hodgkins children were motivated to add to the activities with some tricks of their own. Playfair wrote that when Janet knew cameras were on nothing seemed to really happen. Anita Gregory concluded that the case was overrated and many skeptics accused the Hodgson family of making things up for fame and financial gain. At different points the investigators caught the girls bending spoons themselves, banging on the ceiling with broom handles and faking a lot of the stuff that was going on. In 1980 Janet admitted to ITV via Daily Mail, oh yeah once or twice we did kind of fake it just to see if Mr Gross and uh, Mr Playfair would catch us out, they always did. Things began to quiet down when the police visited the house. However, the next family that moved in reported strange incidences too. 
including hearing voices downstairs and an encounter with a man walking into the rooms. They only lived in the house for two months. Overall, some believed the events to be true, some didn't. Uh, from our perspective, if the events were true, most likely was caused by a jinn at the property. You've got a single woman, mother, raising her little children who were also little girls. Um, you know, more than likely there could have been jinn possession happening at that property and uh, there are accounts of uh, it being faked as well. So that could be the case. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for today. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already you may never see this channel again if it just came up on your feed until tomorrow have a good day